Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to this week's edition of Impulas One's Belonging Series, where we explore the lived experiences of individuals from the Black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. Individuals who've been prepared to share their experiences of how they've gained their sense of identity, how they've gained their sense of belonging as they've um, gone through their various stages of their lives. And you know what, it really is a pleasure to have with us this week, the first black professor and the only black professor of chemistry in this country, and that's Professor Robert um, Mokoya. Um, and Robert is, as I said, he's a professor of chemistry and he's also the pro um, vice chancellor and global engagement at um, Nottingham University. So I would like to just welcome Robert um, to the platform today. And I'm gonna kick off by asking him this first question, which is, Robert, can you tell us what it was that gave you your sense of identity, sense of belonging as you were growing up? Uh, well, I hope you can hear me, <laughs> Wayne. I can hear you, definitely. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, yeah, first of all, let me just say thank you for inviting me to be part of this excellent uh, uh, program. And um, uh, so you've asked me what gave me my sense of identity. Um, I, I would say really growing up uh, as a young person, uh, it was very much the environment in which I grew up, um, uh, the environment which was uh, really defined uh, chiefly by my, uh, by my family. Uh, so I am a member of a, I belong to a fairly large family um, that has grown larger over the years. But as a young person, really, that is what gave me my sense of identity, uh, my family uh, growing up in in, um, uh, in Kenya, in rural Kenya, as it were. <laughs> okay, so your family was the, how, where did you rank in the, the position in, um, in your family? Were you near the top, near the bottom, in the middle? Where were you? Well, I, I suppose you're talking about age. <laughs> <We're> talking about <laughs> rank, yeah, so <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was I'm, I'm I'm one of the younger ones, was and still I am, yeah. So I I'm in a family of nine 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 children. I'm the seventh born. So yeah. that means that I'm one of the younger ones, although we are all uh, now adults and uh, <laughs> grown up really very much. So yeah. Fantastic. So you had a lot of um examples, a lot of was it mainly brothers that you have, or brothers and sisters? Yes, yes. So I have, uh, I have, uh, we, they, um, I've got seven brothers and a sister. So um, most of the my family older than I, apart from of course my mum and dad, um, uh, are brothers um, and a sister who's older, also older than me. So yes, I, I had, um, uh, I had those examples ahead of me to, uh, to, to, to follow. Okay. So in terms of what was it? He has a lot of brothers, a lot of, of older brothers. So I'm, I'm a, I was a younger brother, and I know how older brothers treat younger brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what was it that that um, helped you to? How did they help you to carve out your who you who you were, how you viewed yourself, and how you viewed the family, as it were. Yes, so I would say that the, the family unit um, was really very a, a very strong family uh, family unit, um, and um, my parents, my my uh, mum and dad, um, uh, and my 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 dad was a was a, was a teacher and he became a, a, a minister of religion um, had a way of of bringing us up that uh, really emphasised um, uh, you know um, hard work and. Um, uh, in, in integrity in, in, in that way. And so uh, many of my older brothers uh, took to that. Um, and uh, so growing up, I could see examples of people who are uh, working hard. And, and in a sense, um, uh, we, we had sort of this quiet internal uh, desire to uh, be able to get as far as the first, the first, the, 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 the oldest has gotten to. And, and I have to say that we, uh, my family was very lucky in that my eldest brother uh, really set the scene and um, uh, went quite a long way, and that was an example for each one of us. So sort of it cascaded down to uh, to to where I was. So th this sense of um, uh, of a family unit and um, uh, working together and 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 you know doing the best that we can do at all times. 
Fantastic. So from from a very early age, you had multiple of multiple examples of excellence of 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 um, people who were striving for the best. If if um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you can say that. I, of course, I didn't know it then. I mean, I, I, I look back now and I can see that, but I didn't know it then. I, I, I mean, that, that 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 was the normal. That was my family. That's my how my family behaved. And um, that was a normal thing. I never saw it as being any different from anything. So at that time, I didn't think that there was, but now reflecting and looking back uh, and then being more aware of uh, uh, what has, what happened around and what happens in other places, I can see that much more clearly now. Yeah. yeah, but th that's but that's that's the beauty of for you. You didn't see it as anything different. No, for you, you saw this as this is how we do things. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. And so absolutely. Instilled in you was that okay? This is how I must respond. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and of course, then that gets challenged at some point when yeah. you move out of that unit and you find um, uh, people and individuals who perhaps see you differently and expectations are different. And that gets challenged, but uh, but I have to say that um, um, it, 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 be, because I I valued it and it stayed with me, something stayed there right the way through, despite the different environments I have been in. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So here you are in in rural Kenya. Okay, mm -hmm. what was it like when you went to school then? Were you a good student? <laughs> <laughs> You asked me that. I think you should you should ask my 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 teachers and my classmates whether I was a good student. Um, well, I was just a normal normal people going to school, doing the normal things that I that that, that I did. There was nothing uh, unusual about me. I would uh, I, I would say, um, but I do have to say that I um I I I, I enjoyed going to school. I enjoyed um, various aspects of uh, of of going to school uh, and. Um, you know, um, looking looking back now, I did enjoy some uh, some subjects, and uh, so it, it was an enjoyable time, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, having said that, um, I, I was in an environment where I I you know at that time my 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 father was working in what could be to was a mission uh, a mission a mission school, um, and uh, that also meant that I was meeting with people from across the whole globe. Um, uh, and uh, so that again was something that uh, at an early age um, became somewhat normal in a way that perhaps was not um, the expectation at that time for somebody growing up in in in, in Kenya. But it was an enjoyable time, but fairly normal um, <laughs> school time, as it were. Okay. So so when was it that you developed your passion then for for chemistry? Um, was it in your when you transitioned from? From the primary to secondary school, where, where was it that, that that passion came in? Yes, um, so I mean, I, I, as I say, I enjoyed some. So, so I enjoyed going to school. I enjoyed um, uh, a range of of subjects and activities as well. Um, but I did. I, I found that the the sciences came much more easily uh, for for me. And and for somebody who wanted to be a um, um, who then thought I I could be a good sci I could be I could be I could be a scientist. Um, I, I actually am not. I have to, to confess that uh, um, I, 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 maths doesn't come easily for me, um, and so, so I was, I was looking for a pathway um, to um, something that would be a scientist, but uh, didn't have too much, too much math. But actually, um, to be clear, it's the curiosity in me. So I asked a lot of questions as a, as a youngster. Um, mm -hmm. So um, there was a lot of why, why does this happen like this? Why this? And I found that actually, as I went through uh, school schooling, that chemistry started to answer some of those questions. So I guess it's the it's the curious person in me, and that curiosity has really not gone away. It has stayed with me all the way up to up to this point. So it's the curious me that actually was then attracted by uh, by chemistry in the way that it answers many questions about how things generally work. Uh, I like that the curious me of chemistry. That's not, that's not answered by chemistry. That's not, like that. so, so it's a curiosity that was driving you. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, so where did that curiosity take you? Um, in terms of, all right, we're, we're straying away from maths, but you're into the chemistry. What was you said that your your older brother kind of like had already set a marker for all of you 
as it were. Yes. So he he had gone to university, etc. And so what was it? What was his model? What was his yes. footsteps yes. that you that all of the others were following in? Yeah, good question. So so my eldest brother went to university at a time when perhaps that was not the normal thing to do in, in, in Kenya. But I mean, actually it was unusual for him that he went to university to study pharmacy. Right. But at that time, you could not study pharmacy in Kenya because there was no you, there was no um, there was no place you could study pharmacy in Kenya. So you couldn't go to university to study pharmacy in Kenya. It was not offered in Kenya. So he had to have a government scholarship to come and study pharmacy in Manchester. Uh, and uh, and that, those, those were the, that was a, a time when I was um, I, I was still sort of in, in 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 primary school, coming up to secondary secondary school, thinking about what I wanted to do. Um, and so he set the standard essentially um, in terms of going to university. And so in my mind, you didn't stop until you went to university because that's what he had um, uh, he had done. I can tell you, I didn't know, I didn't understand what pharmacy was at the time or any, any, anything like that. But there was that that sort of uh, uh, st standard that was set there. I knew that it was. Um, I knew that he was a scientist, and here I here I was being interested in 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 in, in science. And of course, he was. He was. He and my other siblings were very encouraging in the things that I I did. So I think all of that came together. The fact that I enjoyed chemistry, uh, and so I I just studied more and more uh, and, and more of it through to high school. And then um, when going to university, I decided that I was going to uh, to study chemistry amongst many other things I could have studied. Fantastic. Where did you study your first degree then? Oh yeah, so I, I I went to the University of Nairobi. Um, so I have been to two UNs. Yeah. I University of Nairobi is, uh, you know, um, I say I was med at the University of Nairobi, but I work at the University of Nottingham. Both of them yeah. are UNs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I did I I did my first degree at the University of Nairobi. Fantastic. There was a, you you. I remember when we were discussing before you um told me a story about the school which you were in and the significance of the school which you were in in terms of its historical status oh yes so it's interesting that i i was when i was in secondary school um and i spent four years in a school that that school was actually set up during um uh the the colonial times and and <laughs> it's interesting that king charles is visiting kenya at the moment with queen camilla uh, at the moment, and one of some of the people they have met are people who actually fought for freedom in uh, in Kenya uh, at, at at that time in the in the sixties. So the school was set up nearly a hundred years ago for what they called the natives. So it was set up for the Africans. So it was called a government African school. Mm -hmm. So I went to that secondary school. Of course, now when by the time I went to it, it was it was post independence and um, but that's the history of the school. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 uh, it was set up for for the Africans. And then when I went to high school, uh, where I spent two years, I went to Nairobi School, which was actually at the time called Prince of Wales School. And actually it was set up um, to for the settlers. It was only a white school um, mm -hmm. during the, the colonial time. So I moved from a school that was set up for, for Africans to a school that was set up for uh, whites only. It was the Prince of Wales School. And of course, our, 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 our biggest competitors were uh, Duke of York, which was another school that was down the road that was set up for uh, whites only. When I say that, um, by the time I was going to these schools, um, everybody could go there. And of course, uh, this is many years after in the, uh, after independence. But but there was that that interesting comparison there of the way the the schools were actually set up and they and the different experiences I had in those two schools. Wow! Wow! That that's really interesting, and we know that we know that we have this colonial past. We know that, that it's part of our histories. It's part of both countries' histories. Yeah, yes, well, of course it is. It is. It is. It, 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 is. it, it is part of that. And 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 um, and for me, um, just just thinking about that, and and actually looking at the changes that have taken place in those schools uh, over the years. But of course, both schools are now uh, very important schools in in Kenya. They are they are proud of their of their history. Um, but they are they they are, they are producing some of the best um, uh, future leaders for for Kenya as it were. Fantastic, fantastic. So all right, let's 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 look at the, your 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 pathway. Then you you've got your brother as as a trail setter, right? He's he's kind of like instilled in all of you guys. You're all going to university. I don't care. I'm, I'm sure he may well have said it to you sometime. <laughs> and. And now you're at University of um, 
the University of Nairobi. Yes. <clears throat> what was it? What was it like for you undertaking the courses? What sparked your? What increased that curiosity that you spoke to us about earlier on? So I, I very much enjoyed studying chemistry at the University of Nairobi. I met um, I met friendships, wonderful people that are still my friends. Some of my, actually my some of my best friends are the people I met during those three years that I studied at the uh, at the University of uh, of Nairobi. I have to say it was very basic. Um, uh, we we um we 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 had a lot of uh, we had a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, of course, we did a lot of lab work, uh, but it was limited in terms of the equipment. So when I compare what my students in Nottingham now are able to do and what I could do, uh, I realized that actually, in a sense, we we had to learn in a diff in a slightly different way because we had to imagine some things because we didn't have all of the equipment and we couldn't do all of the things that we wanted to to do to, to do. Uh, but it it just meant that we had, in a sense, had to work a lot harder. And for me. Who then left that environment to come and do my PhD in this country? That transition was quite an interesting one uh, because of the of the background that I'd had for those um, uh, those three years. But uh, um, you know, in 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 Kenya, we at, at the time particularly we had an education system that was based on a on a, on a pyramid, and um, you know we started with a very large number of people in primary school, but only a small and smaller diminishing number of people went to. Um, to the higher level. So by the time you got to university, uh, it was only a small, um, uh, and really those who had, um, according to uh, you know, uh, exam performance had performed well are the ones who got to uh, university. So you you were always surrounded in university at that time by, by, by people who were really, really very, very able. And that actually made for a very invigorating environment. So uh, 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 what you said earlier, Ron, was that you were surrounded by future leaders. Um, so that that part of the university system, based on what you're saying, if it's yeah. almost like stratifying, and yeah. Yeah. Um, it was it was designed for people who were going to make an impact. Yes, at the, at the time that is the way it was. I'm glad to say that actually it's it's not so 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 exclusive now, and that I think I think that's the right thing. But at the time, because of, of what was available, um, mm -hmm. it's really the small a very small number of people that were able to get to. Uh, to, to to university so so I mean I'm I can I can say that from my primary school class mm -hmm. um uh, and there was 40 or 40 40 of us I'm the only one actually who did go to university uh and so that is that is an interesting statistic to consider uh, yeah. I think now now that would be something that would be quite difficult to um uh, to recreate for people going to university at, at this at this point in time in Kenya Right, fantastic. That's that's a really interesting point that you made because it kind of like ties in again with your brother being a trail setter. Yeah, yes, yeah. You know, setting the standard. Yes, that, yeah. And many of the other students may not have had that kind of. I agree. I agree I entirely agree with you. And and sometimes I say to him, you know, if it wasn't for you, I would probably be doing something else. Um, and 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 it's it's probably the it's probably correct that actually seeing somebody like you who is doing something that um um sort of makes makes it makes it a normal thing to do and you probably don't even realize it but you just you just get on with it and you are able to get there yeah. uh, perhaps in a way that you wouldn't have if that person wasn't there as as a role model or uh, you know in, in a sense yeah yeah brilliant you you also just mentioned about the fact that that transition so you started off at the university of nairobi selection of how did you know that you what was it that then said to you okay go and do a phd it's one thing to to do your degree but then to say right i'm going off to do my phd what was the thought process what happened yeah so again it comes down to my curiosity actually at the end of my chemistry degree at the university of nairobi i, I got a job i got a, a, a job that uh, was considered a very good job i got a job with unilever so uh, and I'm sure they wouldn't mind me saying this. I got a job with, at Unilever in Kenya yeah. uh, as a management trainee. Um, and I, I, I took on the job and, and worked with Unilever for a year. Actually, I found it um, I found that it wasn't for me because my curiosity and my desire to sort of um, um, be in a completely different environment from that that you'd find yourself as a, a sort of a management trainee, as a manager, meant that... Um, I, I, I realized that that was not a pathway that I wanted to follow. I wanted to do something else. And actually that was to just go back and do some research. And um, uh, and, and, and so I, I started looking for ways to go back and uh, 
uh, and do research. And that's how I found my route um, to this uh, this country and to, to Cambridge for my PhD. Mm. So, that, all right. So, let, let, so you worked in Nairobi for a while. Yes. Um, and but your curiosity kept pulling. Yes, you I mean, I it, it yeah, I mean, I I, I you know, it, in a sense, and I'm perhaps it's different for other people, but but every 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 there was a sense in which every day would probably be the same. You'd be doing more or less the same things and, until you switch roles. So so although it was a, an excellent job and very 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 interesting in many ways, um, I didn't I didn't find what I was looking for there, and I felt that I would find that by going on and doing. Uh, some uh, further furthering my studies and then seeing where that would take me. It wasn't it wasn't then clear that I wanted to be where I am now, yes. but I certainly did want to do some research to do a PhD. Yes. So how did you get back into it? Because you transitioned out to do go to a kind of like industry and then to get a PhD in Cambridge. I can understand if it was in in Kenya, but how did you get that link to Cambridge and to to pursuing your degree there. Yeah, so if I had wanted, I could have stayed at the University of Nairobi to carry on doing for my master's because they, they would normally at the time have retained some of their best students to do that. But I did want to find out what it is like to um, to, to go and work in industry. And, and this was really uh, one of the, um, the, the the best opportunities you could have. So I did, I did take that on. Um, but of course, at the time, I wanted to go back and uh, do um, a master's or a PhD. That opportunity had had gone because I had not taken on the, the scholarship. So I had to look for another scholarship. And I, I did want to experience something else um, outside of Kenya. And um, uh, and and so I'm so one day I was wandering around the University of Nairobi and uh, and so this uh, notice that uh, was advertising Cambridge Commonwealth scholarships and said, look, if you want to go and study in Cambridge, uh, you can apply, and and essentially that was it. I applied um, from this notice that I saw up on a notice board of the University of Nairobi, and uh, and the rest is history. I I was successful because uh, my parents could not have afforded um, uh, a scholarship or to pay for my studies at Cambridge, and so I got that scholarship, and it's what enabled me to 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 then uh, after a year of working in uh, Unilever to um, uh, to go up to Cambridge to uh, to do a PhD. That's brilliant. That, that's that's the, the fact that there was the opportunity through the scholarship for you to be able to go and extend your learning capacity or to 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 kind of I'm not going to say quench the thirst of your curiosity, but to help you to understand what you were curious about. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. really good. Um, what was it like then? I'm going to ask that, that question. What was it like then coming from nice hot Kenya? <laughs> to, to, to Cambridge, <laughs> I think I think it helped that one was young at that time that you sort of get on with things and uh, and are able to adjust quite uh, quite easily. So although one, I'm not sure one ever gets to the cold weather here, um, <laughs> um, you know. But I guess if one's born here, then it's uh, it's my it's very different from my children who are born here. But um, I, I I guess I guess um it, it was um it was it was an opportunity that was really um. Uh, excellent for me, but helped by the fact that the Kenyan education system um, that I went through at the time was very similar to the um, to the one that um, uh, exists in the UK, because obviously having been a colony, um, there was that uh, similarity. And of course, the common language and, um, and and lots of relations between the two countries meant that I was I was not um, too unaware of what I was going into. But of course, um, you know, um, I, I came to a place that was um, uh, much better equipped and, uh, um, and 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 where I found the pace a little bit uh, different. And people might think that the pace was uh, was too fast for me, but I, I found the pace, uh, I wanted the pace to be a bit quicker than I, I found it to be uh, in, in many ways. So so the, the transition had some, some 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 challenges, but helped by the fact that um, uh, Kenya is uh, is not, is, it's got a lot of things that are similar to um to the UK in terms of the education system. Um, and it's a transition that many, many other Kenyans have made. Um, and, uh, and and I was just lucky to be part of that, um, um, to, to have that opportunity, yeah. yeah that, that's really kind of like based on what we had earlier said, said earlier, where, where we said about that similarity from the schooling system where it was 
through colonize uh, the through the colonial system you had those two separate schools and then we're saying actually the education systems are not totally the same but there were so much similarities that it felt it felt natural it, 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 yeah it, it, not, not completely natural but there were, there were certain things i could easily recognize and yeah. uh, and and you know that the, the, of course the language is uh, was was one of the things that uh, what made it easy and you know it could have been any other uh, university in the uk that i came to but i i'll tell you that growing up in kenya if there if there are certain universities that you tend to hear of or, or know about when you're growing up growing up in kenya at the time i was growing up and uh, and, and 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 Cambridge was one. So 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 I I didn't know anything about Cambridge, but I I knew that there's a place called uh, called Cambridge amongst many others. Of course, I knew about Manchester because my brother was there as well, and and a few other places. So, and the fact that my brother had been here uh, years earlier also actually um, uh, made that difference because um, you know I, I think he had probably a much more challenging time uh, because he was there in the in the seventies in the early seventies. Yeah. while it was coming up uh, nearly you know uh, 20 to ne nearly 20 years later so yeah. you know things were quite different yeah yeah that's very i was gonna i was gonna ask you about that that did your brother give you any advice as to what to expect when you you landed on these shores yeah i mean the stories he told us from when he was uh, in manchester that i was uh, only <laughs> a little boy and so you you pick up a lot of those things and uh, so over, over over the years, um, yeah, and uh, and and of course you can imagine he did talk to me about what I might uh, 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 expect, and yes, so that that was helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, listening to somebody who had spent four years studying in the UK was really helpful for me, even though it was in a different uh, university. Yeah. Fantastic. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I want us to go a little bit technical now. I didn't. Okay. Yes, yeah. Before. But tell tell us about what it was that you did as your PhD. Uh, okay, and what it was that was the main driving force um, in your studies at that time? So it, it was very interesting that actually when I was, when I came to, to do my PhD, I, um, you know, at Unilever, I was working um, as a management trainee and I was working in, and I'm sure they wouldn't mind me saying this, I was working using what are called clays, because uh, clays are, 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 are clay minerals are used to clean up edible oils. Mm -hmm. um, so you get your rapeseed oil and it has to be um, uh, refined so that it is it is right for you to to use. So I was actually doing that in um, in in Kenya in the in the Unilever um, uh, setup. And when I came to the UK, and this was a pure coincidence, it turned out that actually the project that I was going to do was uh, working on clays, and it was going to actually investigate how and why these clays um, do what they do to clean up edible oils. Uh, and this was just a coincidence that actually um, the company that sold um, the clay to Unilever um, in Kenya and in other places uh, was the one that was sponsoring my PhD in Cambridge um, to just dig a little bit further about how these clays work. So, so there was uh, there was this 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 connection um, that was just 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 by chance, um, but it just meant that I I started off with a slight advantage because I actually knew a little bit about the clays, yeah. um, but soon realized that I didn't know anything about them when I actually started doing the research. Uh, and then of course, that's how uh, I then built up my um, uh, my, my PhD. It's, it's funny, I'm, I'm laughing from, from the perspective about the clays weren't curious enough for you when you were working at Unity, yeah. right? but when you came to do them on your PhD, they in sparked your curiosity just because you were now looking at them from a different angle. They, they, they were something that we used to do at certain jobs. They were purely functional. Yeah. We didn't we, we expected them to perform up to a certain point full stop and and they did what we expected them to do. Now I was investigating them to find and that was completely different. And yeah. for me then that was far more interesting than just simply using the clays as it were. That's fantastic. So your time at Cambridge you you you've got you you're doing your degree you're enjoying your did you enjoy your time at cambridge what what yes was... i very much enjoyed my time at uh, at at cambridge so i was um i i of course in in, in the department of chemistry and uh, um as as some of you may know if you're in cambridge you 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 really are part of a college and i was at trinity college 
So I had a good, a very good time at Trinity College. I had met, met very good friends again, friends who have remained friends. And 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 it was a very in again a very invigorating um, um, uh, environment. I was in a research group where my PhD supervisor, who has remained uh, uh, a, a, a good friend up to now, <laughs> Professor Bill Jones, uh, now retired, excellent supervisor. I say to everybody, if I can be half as good as he as he was to me, then I'm sure my students will be happy. Mm -hmm. um, and so he had a group of international students. Um, so there was um, two other Kenyans. There were people from Malawi, from uh, from Zambia, from South Africa, from South America, uh, and from other parts of the world, from Asia. So it was a very it was very much very cosmopolitan within the group, within the the college, uh, and also within the um, uh, the department and the university at large. So um, yeah, wonderful times. Yeah. Let, let me ask you because because when when even just. To three, four years ago, there was the story about how there was a lack of representation at Cambridge for undergraduate students. Yeah. But from, from, from the description that you've just given, right, it sounds to me like your prof professor, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't catch his Bill name. Bill Jones, Bill Jones. Bill Jones. Yeah. He, within his, within his department, there was lots of, as you called it, cosmopolitan. There was, he, he selected... Uh, I think, yeah. Was he, think was he an oddity compared to everywhere else? No, he, Bill. Bill was an oddity. Uh, he was an oddity at the time in the sense that he had all these students from, uh, and 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 sometimes you know it's if you haven't supervised an overseas student uh, at PhD level, there is a tendency to be um, to be hesitant to um, to supervise. But once you actually have an international student or an overseas student, especially from certain countries, and you realize how good they can be then that opens the door. So I think you find that there are people who have always tended to and some who have not really done it because of that hesitance. Um, so Bill was very unusual in that respect. And of course, we are talking here about people at PhD level. So the, 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 the mix of, 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 of students um, at postgraduate level, particularly at PhD level, is completely different from um, undergraduate. So, 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 so I had this surprise when I started giving tutorials um, as, a, as a PhD student in Cambridge giving tutorials within Trinity College, that I never gave a tutorial all those years. I never gave a tutorial to any black students. All the students I gave tutorials were, were white students of a particular a sort of background. And there may have been one or two from Asia or so, mm -hmm. but I never had any black student as, um, as, as my TUT all the years that I was in, um, in, 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 in Cambridge. And I was there as a uh, you know, I was there a PhD student, and I also was there as a as, as a research fellow. Um, so yes, there the representation issue is um, uh, quite quite evident here. Yeah. It's that, that's that, I'm just I'm just drawing on some of the conversations which I've had with undergraduate students, and how they have often said to me that they've not seen a black lecturer in their the whole of their time. Whereas you're saying the opposite, that, that when you were doing your your tut tutorials and stuff with your tutees, you didn't see the representation of students coming through. Yeah. No, I didn't I didn't see that. And and of course what 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 I would say is um it's one thing to give tutorials as a PhD student in in uh, uh in, in 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 Cambridge or in in uh, such a scenario. How many of those then who do that come become lecturers and then and then go on to be so 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 um I know that for many of the students who are my uh, my peers at Cambridge um who could have been where I am who are from who are who are the same heritage as I um I can't think of any of them and I know they did want to stay on I can't think of any of them who are anywhere where uh, doing what I am doing so so there is there, there, there's two issues here. Yeah. Um, that um, people do come, particularly I would say from 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 Africa, and, and do PhDs here if they want to stay here and become uh, the, the 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 senior professors of tomorrow. That's very difficult. Yeah. Okay. And the number of um of of black students, if we may put it that way, who are coming through uh, in places like the one I referred to, my own um, chemistry department here, um, and perhaps the same similar situation in in, in Imperial. We know their representation is again quite um, uh, quite an issue, um, yeah. not as many as we would like. Yeah, yeah. 
that's that you've raised several points there. Um how did you then make that transition? I'm just wary of the time, but how did you manage to make that transition from yeah. from um doing your postdoc, becoming a fellow? How did you then get that lectureship position? What did you have to do? What road did you go down? Yeah, so 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 I mean, if you if you look at my career, I I mean, I I was I was lucky in the way that I've described getting this the the, 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 the scholarship. I, I was then lucky at, before the end of my PhD, I was elected to be a junior research fellow at Trinity College, mm -hmm. um, which gives gives one four years to do whatever research they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I never was a tradition of um, postdoc. So I had those four years, yeah. and before those four years ended, um, I then had a, 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 a um, an EPSRC advanced fellowship. Um, which was five years um, of, uh, of of fellowship, and it's during that five years of fellowship that I then decided to move away from Cambridge and come to Nottingham, uh, where I, I I was I, I would I would move on to a lectureship once my um, uh, EPSRC advanced fellowship, as it was then, mm -hmm. um, came to an end. So I, I had this sort of uh, a couple of, of of fellowship that then to the lectureship and then the rest of it. Um, but during that time, while that may look like it was a very <laughs> smooth transition, um, there the, 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 the were challenges that I, 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 I faced. And I think it is at that point that I started to realize that um, there are certain challenges that are specific um, for certain people. Mm -hmm. uh, because I started to realize this sense of, um, um, is there space for me here? Um, how do I, the, 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 I mean, the expectations from people mm -hmm. around me, um, and and I had to really dig deep into my own belief that I'd been set sort of established um, from a, from from when I was young um, mm -hmm. to to keep telling myself that I yes I can make the next step. It would have been a lot easier for me just to do something else or to say this is too hard. Mm -hmm. um, um, but you know, so it looks like it is simple and straightforward. But there were there were many challenges along the way. And and um, I had people who really were very helpful and, and encouraged me. Um, and uh, if I didn't have those people to keep on telling me you can do it, I would I would have stopped. Uh, I would have it was too, I would have found something um, different to do. Yeah, yeah. The, there's so many things which you just said there, which just is firing my brain at the moment because you you spoke about the challenge, right? Um, but that you also support you also spoke about the support which yeah. helped you to get through that challenge yeah. but you also sp spoke about that inner strength yeah yeah from your probably stemming from your childhood and yeah. the, the 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 experiences you had there i suppose my question would be because you were questioning yourself about do i actually belong here right yeah, and yeah. that's kind of like the, the thematic the theme of this yeah. Is yeah. the sense yeah. of belonging. What yeah. was it that was preventing you, do you think, from having that sense of belonging? Yeah. So 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 I never I never I never well the only time I got to question myself, those questions came to me because of the environment that I, I and the signals I was getting from the environment. So so I have to be clear and I say that uh, to say that many times I was given the signal that this is not the place for you. Mm. Uh, this is not you, you're not going to make it um you know um this this environment is not for you so 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 there was this sort of dumping down of expectations on my part um right. and um and this sometimes came from 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 people i expected to be um supporting me supporting me um so so i, I though i have to say that a much much smaller <laughs> number of people and i can count them perhaps with with less than the fingers of my hand, who I could go back to, and they would they would put sense into me and say, "Look, be objective about this. Look at how you're performing, and compare yourself to the ones you think are going to do well. And mm -hmm. you're performing just as they are. Mm -hmm. Keep on doing what you're doing, and focus on the objective bits. Do not do not. If people are telling you you're not going to make it, that's not your problem. That's their problem. Carry mm -hmm. on doing what you're doing." But then I would ask the question, but they're the ones deciding whether I'm going to keep on what we are. And then, and then I remember once somebody saying to me, you have to do so well that it is embarrassing for them not to let you through. And that stuck in me. 
that actually it becomes embarrassing when you are better than everybody else, but you're still stuck in a box where everybody else is going. And from that point onwards, I realized that the one thing I had to hold on to, I never give up, is excellence. Mm -hmm. So excellence, excellence, excellence. I did not want any favors. I did not want to be let through. Just look at how well I'm performing. And if I'm performing well enough, give me a fair chance. And mm -hmm. so that's something I like to say to people. It's about excellence and excellence and excellence. And if you hold on to that, then even if actually people around you are saying to you that you don't belong, mm -hmm. you can see how you belong. And that belonging has to come from your, 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 your own perspective. But what I have found is that people do change then when they realize that actually they are you are challenging their own perception, perceptions about whether you belong or not. That's fantastic. I could sit here and I could just talk with you for hours <laughs> because there's so many questions that just, are just flying in my head. I'm going to ask you then, because it, it sounds like even though there was only a few people <laughs> uh, kind of like in your corner, as it were, who were giving you that pragmatic advice and helping you to find perspective, even though the rest of the world was trying to distort your vision. Um, when what was it then that helped you when you made your transition to the other UN, UON, the University of Nottingham? Nothing, what yeah. Was it what was it that 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 gave you your perspective there and, and a better fit, as it were? Yeah, you know, I think I think I think I think all I can say is that um, I. I realized that um, if I could carry on doing the things that I was I enjoyed doing and perform them at a level and and actually to be if you want to find out who's doing well it's all in the public domain you can you can look up what everybody's doing and mm -hmm. if you if you if you're doing as well as the best wherever they are um, in in the in the in the in the in the, in the wide world then I I think you're doing well um, and people can say all sorts of things they say to you. But I think you need to be able to 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 be confident in your in in yourself that you're uh, you're doing all the right things. And then, of course, um, try as much as possible to have people who are supporting you and are listening to you and 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 actually are giving you the right advice uh, that is actually um, right for you. So so the the situation in 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 Nottingham and I've been Nottingham more than 20, 20 years. It's a place that I have been, I have very much uh, enjoyed. I have been able to do the things that I want to do. Yes. There have been challenges, lots and lots of, uh, of 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 challenges. But you know, I was I was breaking new ground when I came to Nottingham. I don't think they had had a black member of staff. I'm still the only one um, in Nottingham. But the environment has completely changed mm -hmm. to the extent that now, you know, if if we had two or three others, that's not really what needs to change. But people actually see things differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 I'm sure that there were if there was a younger version of me coming through, um, they would have a completely different. Um, journey to my own and wouldn't have to face some of the things that I faced and, and I, I think that's the way it should be. Okay I'm gonna ask because I remember when I first saw your name come to prominence it was because of a a, 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 a um, news piece where it said that you were the one the only black professor of chemistry in the country I'm hoping that that's not still the case well, I, the, the, the statistics still say say that if there is another, there is there is not more than two of us. So the, that's still rounded down to zero and not to five. So the statistics say that this that's probably still just um, <laughs> just 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 the one. I think I think whether it is it is one, two, or five, that's still t a terrible statistic. That's, that's right. Exactly. So whether yeah. it's one or two, it doesn't really matter. But the, the statistics still don't don't round it up to five. I am looking forward to the day when I will look at it and it will say five, but at least I'll know there's three of us. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing was about the fact that despite all of the work that you were doing and the good that funding bodies weren't funding your research. Yeah. yeah. Why? <laughs> How do we explain those kinds of things? I'm looking for the answer to that, and uh, you know, I, I, I am. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, for a long. First of all, I should say I didn't know this that I was the only one until the Royal Society of Chemistry told me about 2018, and I had already been a professor for nearly uh, more than 10 years by then, and I, but I hadn't met any other black chemistry professor as it was. Yeah. Um, but you see, um, to do with the with with the funding, um, 
you know, I, I don't know. I don't know why that is. But actually, since that piece came out, I have um, had a lot of other people who come to me and say that their experience has not been dissimilar uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to mine. And, um, and and there is some 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 um, there are some questions there. I mean, I have never I have never necessarily said that, um, you know, this was because I was I was I am who I am. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it may have been that my 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 research proposals were actually not good enough. But actually, when you see what my outputs and the way that my outputs have received and 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 how my career has progressed, um, that's not possible. And yeah. on average, um, they say that the, the the funding follows success. So if you if you if you if you took somebody with my my profile, um, you know, and and looked at their funding, um, I think there's a question there about um, how I managed to get into that position. But I I, I I'm. I, I I cannot answer that question, but it's it's the reality, um, and it was over a very long period of uh, of time, and um, it's not something I ever wanted to publicize. But I'm glad it came out because mm -hmm. actually it's caused people to to think about this and perhaps people to try and ask the question: Why does this happen? I've got a couple more questions. I know we're kind of like already out of time, but I'm, I've got a couple more questions because based on what you've just said, there was there was something which kind of like was resonating in my head about you spoke about your priority was excellence demonstrating excellence and i'm my i suppose what i'm concerned about is excellence without opportunity because how can you demonstrate excellence when people aren't necessarily giving you the opportunity to demonstrate your excellence, if the, if, does that make kind of yeah, sense? I, I absolutely, Wayne. You you're absolutely saying the right thing. I mean, first of all, um, I think there is a problem with even even excellence. Excellence can be defined in a very traditional way, and if you define excellence in a very traditional way, it just means you exclude every uh, you exclude everybody else except uh, people who have come through a certain pathway. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I at the moment challenge the whole idea of what is actually excellent because excellence can come from all directions and we need to be open about how we define uh, excellence. But that said, there are simple and straightforward ways of um, of defining excellence, at least for somebody in my position who is uh, uh, doing research in a university in, in environment. But you're right, without that opportunity. Um, now, there is this very, 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 very um, a big question of... Um, who actually provides those opportunities? The environment needs to provide those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and and is it is it your role, is it my role to actually uh, be creating those opportunities to the extent that we can? But really, the point is not, it's not, I realized very quickly that it is not me that needed to change. It is the system that needed to change. Mm -hmm. Because um, a long, for a long time, I was being told I need to change to fit into the system. But there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with with excellence that is defined in a different way. But if the system is not is not is not allowing me to flourish, the problem is the system. Yes. And if the system is not allowing certain people from a certain section of the community to, it's the system that needs to change, not the people. Right. Um, and I think when you talk about those opportunities, that is a challenge that we need to offer to the system. That system needs to be offering fair opportunities to everybody. Right. Absolutely. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. Just before I sent out a flyer to everyone, inviting people to come along, and one of my colleagues, a good friend of mine, Dr. Donald Palmer, he he's a he's like a little news hound. He's he's into everything, right? And he said, "Oh, Wayne, I can't make it, but I'll listen to the recording after." But what he sent to me was a news piece, which was telling me about the fact that. Um, you have been elected president of the Royal Society um, of Chemistry. Is that correct? <laughs> no, I'm a trustee. Huh? Huh? I'm a trustee of the Royal Society of trustee. Chemistry. All right, sorry. I, I, I've elevated you. That's your next. I'm a, I'm a trustee, uh, unless you're being a prophet. I'm a trustee of the Royal Society of Chemistry. Yes. But actually, that I, I, um, uh, I, I was um, elected a fellow of the Royal Society. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Now that's that's that is in itself an austere British institution, as it were. But you're you're breaking you're, you're, again, like your older brother who was was 
paving the way for for you to for your success you yeah. being in those places is paving the ways for other people's success to see that you can be there and be there on whatever they call merit but you're there because of the work which you've done absolutely absolutely and and, and i think that 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 um i mean i i absolutely um i'm clear that there's nothing absolutely special about about about, about me um i have had the opportunities i've been lucky i've had the sort of uh, support uh of course it takes a lot of hard work uh but i'm very 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 aware um that um that that this 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 is opening new uh new doors and i'm very keen that any door that I open remains any door that I open remains open. Mm -hmm. um, that actually doesn't close behind me. That actually many more come through that uh, uh, that door. So I'm I'm passionate about things uh, and conversations like this, particularly for any younger <laughs> younger versions of any one of us or younger ones who actually think about their careers who are coming up. Um, I would say to them, just go for it. If that's what you want to do, if you enjoy it, go for it. Fantastic. Wish you the best. Yeah. Absolutely. I normally would open it up for questions. I might just say, is there anyone with one burning question? Otherwise, I'm going to have to start winding down the the. If I don't see anyone's hands in the next three or four seconds, then I'm going to ask my final final two questions. Okay. Okay. I've got a very quick one. <laughs> okay. I see two people. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I see Sarah. Um and Sunday. So quickly, go ahead. I don't know if I missed it, so because I've been up running errands for my mum as well today. But so what you're <laughs> saying about kind of we need to push with our careers, how do we uh, deal with the challenges of because of who we are as black scientists and there's the extra work that we need to do, especially in supporting, helping others, people following up behind us, putting that against the fact that to do well in your scientific career you've been told you need to do it in a certain way and you need to have complete focus on just your career and not doing the other stuff that we do that's an interesting question i think it it boils down to what you what you really want to do so i i i there are things that i do that when i was younger in my career i was told your career is going nowhere unless you stop doing these things uh, I was actually told to stop doing certain things, and this were my my outreach, uh, my outreach, and uh, did I stop doing them? Actually, no. But I found a way of them reinforcing what I was actually doing. I think at the end of the day, um, you have to do what you're comfortable with. You have to do what you enjoy, and you have to calibrate it in your own uh, environment. I think you have to listen to what people are telling you, but you have also to be clear about who's giving you the advice that is best for you. Because people will say all sorts of them uh, of 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 of, of uh, things to you. Um, so so if you enjoy something and you think it's really important, at the end of the day, you have to make those decisions about what you want to do. Thank you. That's great. But I, I can I can see the contradiction, and there's no easy answer. Yes. <laughs> fantastic Sunday. Hi, hi. Thank you, Araba. Fantastic. Uh... Uh, live, your the way you describe your life, the way you move from Kenya to uh, to Cambridge and to the UK is fantastic. But what I wanted to know, as you know, Imperial College, we've been working for years to try and see more people like us at Imperial. And uh, when 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 is it was the chair of of the group called Imperial as one. Does Nottingham University have such group? And are you involved in that? The reason why I'm asking, I'm bringing my son to Nottingham tomorrow, open day. And he wants to study, even though I've tried to convince him he must come to Imperial, he wants to go to Nottingham. Don't ask me why. But I don't want him to get there and find that he's the only one, or you can't see, obviously, you're there as a, as a black professor. I want to be able to know that the university is doing something to, yes. to yes. encourage him to, to have, a, have a good three years at Nottingham. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so Nottingham is a very, very different place now compared to where it was uh, even, you know, 20 years ago when I came. So, um, we have realized obviously that um, an inclusive, a diverse environment actually is a better performing environment. Uh, excluding any section of the community, uh, whether that's the student level, and we can talk about the awarding gap and uh, and, 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 and all of that. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we need to tackle those issues and Nottingham is very, very focused on that. We are one of the, um, we, were, we were one of the first universities to have a, a, a full portfolio PVC for 
EDI, and of course, um, the, 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 the inclusion of uh, the issue surrounding black um, achievement for black students is a very, very big issue there. And it is something that we are looking at uh, all the time. Are the issues that are faced by students in other places still there? Yes, but I do believe that in Nottingham, we are making really bold steps. Um, and, uh, and my own sense of the experience of particularly students of black heritage in Nottingham is, is starting to change. And, and you know, you, you, you don't just don't, I never realized what an impact uh, having somebody at a very senior level has on people's perceptions, even for students. Um, and um, I am, I'm only a tiny part of it, but I, 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 whatever your son decides to go to, uh, your child decides to go to, I'm sure they'll also do well in, in, in Nottingham. We are doing the best we can. Uh, and I can tell you because I am here. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's very encouraging. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Sunday, for your question. All right. I'm going to ask you just two final questions now. And those two questions are kind of like double headers. All right. And the first of the questions is, what do you think your, um, what advice would you give to your younger self? <clears throat> that's the first question. And the second part of the question is, what do you think your younger self would look at you now and say, wow? Well, <laughs> I would start with what advice would I give to my younger self or a young person? Um, well, I'd say to them, if you find something you really enjoy um, and you want to do, just go for it. Just do it. Do it as best as you can. Uh, but don't do it, uh, but 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 get on with it and do it. Do not let other people determine what you do. Um, and uh, do not become a, a statistic. Do not do not look at the statistics and say, I can't do this, I can't, I can't do that. Just just you enjoy it, you want to do it, that's your passion, go ahead and do it. And it may be that you have to be the one that actually is breaking down the barriers to to be able to 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 do it. But I would say, um, just go on and do it, and and uh, and do not let other people's expectations determine uh, what you do. Because by the time you realize that um, that's what you've done, it's too late. So that's what I'd say to uh, my my younger self. Is that what I have done? Uh, I would say perhaps not. Um, I have I have gone through and 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 a lot of things that I have um, I have, have come to me have come to me by a, a reflection. Would I if I look at my younger self looking at where I am? What would I think? Um, I would. I, I would. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> how how did you how did you how did you get there? You know, how did you <laughs> how did you get there? I mean, I I I like to say I have really been very very lucky, and it is strange that I should feel that way because it should feel uh, feel normal. But I have had people who have really uh, su su supported me and. Um, uh, the very fact that I I have done some of the things that I have done means that uh, anybody really can can absolutely do that. But my message remains the same: you want to do something, you enjoy it, you like it, go for it. And um, if other people have an issue, the problem is not you; the problem is them. But also remember to have people who you trust and you listen to, because nobody find me any successful person who didn't have somebody hold their hand. I suspect you there was nobody out there who has not had somebody who's held their hand. So I had people hold my hand. I'm doing my best to hold people's hands. And I wish you well. Professor Robert, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story and your advice. Excellence, go for it. Don't let other people make you a statistic. I love it. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to hear your story and I'm sure it won't be the last time. You're a trailblazer, all right? And so thank you for being the example that you are. And if if we can help in any way, then we're here to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to just um, explain what's going to happen next week. And if we have a little time afterwards, we'll stop the recording and um, we can have a short chat. So let me just share with everyone what's happening next week. So... For next week's conversation or for next week's interview is going to be with Hippolyte Amadi. And he recently, well, a few weeks ago, he won the Nigerian Prize for Science for solving the breathing challenge of um, newborns. 
and he's a professor of bioengineering at Imperial College and the inventor of a number of devices. So please come along next week um, um, at the same time, 12.30, to hear the conversation with him. And if you have missed any of the previous um, interviews, then please go to our YouTube channel, which is tinyurl.com forward slash belonging dash IAO, and you'll be able to hear all of the other interviews which we've done. And we've had some really special guests. And I'm so glad that Robert is going to be included in this list very shortly. Um, all I can say is a big thank you to every one of these individuals and for the likes of Robert who have shared their stories of belonging, what's given them their sense of identity, what's helped them to form their sense of belonging. And as we go into another week, you continue to, to strive to gain that sense of belonging. Until next week, I want to just say another big thank you and I will see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.